I'm Morgan Croucher and this is your GNN News segment. We have no news for this week, but we do have some good news. The refillable water bottle fountain has saved over 320 plastic water bottles. And Mr. K, a science teacher here, is going to tell you more about that. Hey everybody, I'm Mr. K. If you haven't noticed already, we have a new water bottle filter here on the science building side. So, why you should use it? Um, plastics are entering our ocean, which actually get into our fish and our food we eat and things like that. And crazy fact, um, one water bottle you have to buy from like UDF or somewhere like that, if you filled it for two years with regular tap water, you would actually still not make up your money. So it's better to actually get it from tap than wasting plastic bottles and water bottles when we have a perfectly good filter right here. So this filters the water and actually cools it. All you have to do, stick your water bottle underneath. For me, I have to put my finger underneath it because it spills all over me, but it's still better water than getting it out of the tap. And there we go. And I have fresh, clean water ready to drink. So use it, don't go to the other side of the building anymore to grab your water, it's right here. Good morning, y'all. It's Brenna Ashley, and I'm here with your GNN weather. On Friday, we will have a high of 72, a low of 48, and it will be partly cloudy. On Saturday, we will have a high of 72, a low of 47, and there will be showers. On Sunday, there will be a high of 69, a low of 46, and it will be mostly sunny. On Tuesday, there will be a high of 68, a low of 45, and once again, it will be partly cloudy. On Wednesday, there will be a high of 64, a low of 44, and there will be showers. On Thursday, there will be a high of 63, a low of 43, and there will be more showers. This has been your GNN Weather with Brenna Ashley. Have a great day. Hello, everybody. I had an amazing idea, if I do say so myself, to interview Mr. Turpening and Lux Brown. They are both in Hope Squad, and I was going to ask them a few questions about it and Hope Week. Hi guys, thank you for coming. How are you doing? Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So the first question is for both of you. So what is the main goal of Hope Squad? I would say to uplift other students. It's, it's to create a safe space. We're trying to bring people together and try to create a family together and a support system. It's just that I think it's a great thing to have for all of us to be a community and have each other as support systems. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Turpening, what was the inspiration for Hope Week? Um, Hope Week is a part of a program through the Hope Squad program, so it's like a sub-program. And the inspiration really is uh, much of what Lux is saying, that people in general do better together in community, and that includes when we're addressing our problems. And so it's not necessarily hope that all the things that you're wrestling with and struggling with will disappear or go away with the right formula of therapy, counseling, community, but that um, we tend to perceive our problems and experience life in a richer, more joyful way when we're doing it together. And I think that's the heart of Hope Week. All right. And once again to you. So could you talk a little bit about how you're trying to raise awareness to mental health this week? It's hard to say that it's necessarily just awareness or what awareness means in this context, but that I think in the global picture it's that all of us have a dimension of ourselves that would be loosely described as mental health. And some of us are in places where we have a cluster of symptoms that might constitute as a mental illness. And maybe what the ultimate goal would be is to lay out the welcome map for you to experience those things in a in the context of this community where there isn't shame attached to it and where there is um and there's certainly not glory either because that's not that's not a healthy thing we want to be able to look at our problems and our difficulties and take pride in working through them um, but uh, i think that is probably the best answer that i have to that question that's a great answer <laughs> <laughs> uh lux as a student what do you think students will get out of hope hope obviously <laughs> i mean uh I think students need to understand that this isn't this isn't just a little little club that we're doing. This is supposed to be a school wide thing. This is supposed to be all of us together facing our challenges and our struggles together and understanding them. And I think it's important for all of us to understand one another. And 
maybe a little similar ways, but I mean, we're all different, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Turpening. All this week you've had those canvases set up in the lunchroom for people to paint on. What gave you the idea for that and what will you do with them afterwards? The idea entirely came from Mrs. Grimmett. Yeah. And I think she yeah, that's her part of this or one we of her parts. So, to her. so yeah, I think <laughs> I think what she was hoping to see was that uh, the community of students would be able to put together a series of depictions of what brings them hope and that together in a mural format. That would be something that's interesting for others to look at and for us to be able to say, hey, look how different our community is. And, and yet, in a certain sense, we're united on this on this canvas. Sharing it together. Yeah. I love that answer. Lux. <clears throat> uh, Hope Squad members are chosen by students for students, correct? Mm -hmm. So how do you feel that improves the quality of the group? I think it, it makes people understand that there's people out there that trust you and they trust to talk to you and they're hoping that you can bring more to your community and I think me being voted on here I, I felt extremely honored and I think it's such a crucial part of your peers to know that this is someone I can trust this is someone that values me values my understanding I think that's important <laughs> so I think it really does enrich the club a lot and I think it enriches the community that's Especially awesome. with students. <laughs> we are definitely trying really hard to make it to where students are more welcoming. I think a lot of people are are getting the wrong idea about what we stand for. But I mean, this will clearly show that we're here to help and it's not anything judgmental or we're not trying to fix you. It's if you want to talk, we're here for you. We're like listening. Yes, it's a support. We're here. Yeah. Can you unpack that a little bit, the, <laughs> the impression that some people some super? Well, I think some people just think, oh, well, it's, it's Hope Squad, it's for suicide prevention. It's not just sure. suicide prevention. This is about conserving yourself, and it's about maintaining your well being. And it's not just about suicide. Yeah. When well, you, um, you can't, I mean, you can't overestimate, imagine that there are kids among us who gone through some set of circumstances in their life or some unfolding of their neurology to where they've gotten to the conclusion that life isn't worth living and that perhaps the answer for them is that it should be over. The fact that that exists in the world is something it's, that maybe belongs to all of us to take part in in some capacity and um, shouldn't be trivialized I'd say because it's real but at the same time you know like we talked about earlier it shouldn't be glorified yeah. either. I think maybe trying to find that balance is something that we're striving towards as a, as a group of staff and students together. And the last question, Mr. Turkney, are you planning on continuing with Hope Week in the future? Yeah, most certainly, and open to suggestions too. We're uh, kind of a really collaborative group where when people have input, we want to adopt it because it's for the school and to try to be able to us do the energy work, but the the vision coming from what would be best fit for the groups of kids and for the staff. And so because of that, we anticipate it looking different every single year and we'll probably learn and keep some of the things we did this year and maybe replace it with other aspects of the uh, Hope Week next year. Do you so, think that that's Yeah, something? it's like a plant. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to foster this plant to yeah. make it even bigger and stronger and more beautiful. What kind of plant do you think? I think it'd be, I don't like know. Eucalyptus or something. Yeah. <laughs> or like the lily of the valley. There They're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming. I'm glad you guys could answer my questions. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. And I hope you as viewers know a little bit more about Hope Squad. So, thank you. <laughs>
as well as an away boys baseball game against Blanchester High School, a home boys varsity baseball game against Blanchester High School, and a home girls JV softball game against Bethel Tate High School. Wednesday, April 14th, there will be a co-ed varsity track invite to NR. There will also be an away girls varsity softball game against Wilmington High School. There will also be a home boys junior varsity baseball game against Wilmington High School, an away boys baseball game against Wilmington High School, and a girls home junior varsity softball game against Wilmington High School. Thursday, April 15th, there will be a home boys varsity tennis match against New Richmond High School. Also, there will be an away boys varsity baseball game against Bethel Tate High School. There will also be an away girls junior varsity softball game against Fairfield High School. And last but not least, there will be a home girls varsity softball game against Madeira High School. I'm Ryan Boone, and these are your GNN Sports. What's up guys, I'm Brenna Ashley and I'm hitting you with another book of the week. B is for book and for bowling. Strike. <laughs> this week I'm going to go over a graphic novel called Invisible Differences by Mademoiselle Caroline and Julie Dachez. Marjorie is a very shy woman who doesn't quite understand the world around her. She has a boyfriend who doesn't understand the way she thinks and feels about things. She decides to talk to someone about these feelings and is diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome. I really like this book. I thought it was perfect for Autism Awareness Month and I feel like a lot of people could relate to this book in the sense of autism and anxiety. And it's a graphic novel, so there's a lot of pluses with this book. So it gets a 5 out of 5. Like I said, I think a lot of people could relate to this graphic novel. It's easy to read and very interesting. I definitely recommend. Anyways, see you guys next week and have a great weekend.